Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. Today, we're gonna to turn this old ottoman into this rustic coffee table you can make completely out of reclaimed wood. Join me. Well, here I am, mid-Saturday morning, coming back from garage sailing. I only found one thing worth my time. It happens to be this old ottoman that has, I don't know what's on it. It's got some stains on it. I decided that I'm gonna take this thing apart, pitch this, and I'm gonna build a tabletop for it. I make my way over to the lumber rack and I have some old either pallet wood or some fencing, I'm not really sure. I cut a paper template out of the tabletop size and I think I got enough wood to make this happen. I go over to the jointer and I joint one edge of each of these boards and I'm gonna then reference that edge up against the table saw fence and finally cut these to final width. If you're cutting old wood down on a table saw, just be careful. Sometimes there's bends and twists in it. Just take your time. Be careful, you'll be fine. I happen to have an old two foot by four foot piece of three quarter inch plywood here. This is gonna be perfect for the tabletop. I go ahead and rip it to width, and make another adjustment, get the panel cutting sled out and cross cut it to length. I take a speed square, put some 45 degree angle marks from end to end, extend those marks with a ruler and this is just gonna give me kind of a line of reference so I can put this herringbone pattern in here. I decide it looks great so I go ahead and put the glue and nails to it. Now the beginning stages of this goes very quickly. You use a finish gun nailer, you nail these pieces in, you glue them in place, but when you get to the edges, you're gonna have to make a few cuts here. I take each piece over to the chop saw, I put it in place. At this point, I realized I did it wrong, so I had to hammer it back out. But anyway, the point is, is that you make mistakes, and that's okay. So I make the adjustment, and it fits in there just fine. This process of putting things down, making cuts, putting them down, it takes a little bit of time, but it's all worth it in the end. Evidently, I have some company right now. My wife and her friends are outside. My mom comes out with my daughter. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, the process continues. You make these 45 degree angle cuts. You put them in place, nail them in. I finally can see a light at the end of the tunnel. But I gotta go inside for a minute. Time to spend some time with this little girl because my wife had to run some errands. <laughs> Look at her. Such a happy little girl. God, I cherish these times we get together. All right, back at it. I got a few pieces left. I'm on the final home stretch. I got one little bitty piece I gotta cut. And then that's all she wrote for covering the top. Well, there it is, all covered up. I do have to trim the edges though. But look at that, I have barely any wood left. I was just right with the calculation on how much I needed. Whew, dodged the bullet, worked out well. So as I'm making this makeshift straight edge guide for my circular saw, I realized that my camera had died. Well, I ended up making that cut. Now I have a reference line to put up against that table saw fence to make the other cut. And then I simply break out the panel cutting sled and finally get this thing to final width. Now I want to talk a little bit about shop safety for a second, in particular right now, safety glasses. Right here, three, two, boom, right there. These pieces were flying around my shop. One of them happened to hit me in the safety glasses, okay? So I think there's an age old saying that says something like, forgetting your safety glasses could greatly impact how you see the rest of the world. So don't ever forget to wear them. Promise you, you won't regret it. I go back to the lumber rack and I find some old fencing. I use these pieces, I'm gonna use them to trim out this table. I think it's gonna look pretty good. But before I do that, I gotta make sure this tabletop is somewhat level. These pieces are old, they're twisted. This angle grinder with a 36 grit sanding pad makes quick work of this. I come back with some 220 grit and then I hit it with some 320. Good enough for me. Now to make this easier for me, I attach some clamps to the bottom to keep this piece up in the air while I'm working on it. Here I'm attaching these old fence panels as edge banding around the whole entire tabletop. Three panels on the top, and then I decided to go ahead and miter the corners. 45 degree angle. I bring the piece back to it, 
realize it wasn't quite short enough, make the adjustment, tack it in with some glue. Here you can see the corner coming together nicely. Miter corners always look great. As long as they're cut properly, you'll have no issues. Well, with the tabletop semi-finished, I'm putting it on the base. I think it looks pretty good. I do some hand sanding to kind of get the rough edges off, but I want to leave some of the character of that old fencing along the edge of this tabletop. A little bit of compressed air makes quick work of getting that dust out of all those cracks. At this point, I'm going to clean the tabletop with some mineral spirits, getting all those fine dust particles out of there because I'm about to apply some finish. This finish is equal parts of mineral spirits, polyurethane, and actual stain. What I'm doing here is I'm applying it conservatively, not too much, and I'm going to let it dry in this state. With letting that polyurethane dry, this next coat of ebony stain and polyurethane is going to go on very liberally. It's going to stay on there, but it's not going to permeate the surface of the wood. The point of this is to get the black color into all the cricks and crannies and the nail holes. As I start to rub it in, I kind of see that it's getting in there. I take some mineral spirits and I wipe it all clean. I guess it gives you the effect of each piece of wood has kind of like a black border and each nail hole now looks very dark, very rustic. I love it. Looks like a pirate ship. And once that finish is dried, I go ahead and put some paste wax on it, applying it with a 2000 grit sanding pad. Once that puts a haze on there, gets it dried up for about 15 minutes, I go ahead and take an old t-shirt and buff it to a semi-gloss finish. Well, there it is. The next morning, I decided to get it out in some natural sunlight so you guys could take a good look at it. This thing turned out great. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Here we are at the end of another project. I think it turned out pretty nice. This is one of those examples of where you could take something absolutely undesirable in many people's eyes and put a little sweat equity into it and make something actually fairly nice. I really appreciate the view, guys. If you've made it this far, I guess you like the content. Hit that like button if you don't mind. As my channel is in its infant stages still, that stuff really helps me along. If you haven't subscribed, I would definitely, definitely appreciate that as well. And there's a couple other videos over here I'm going to put. I'll link those as well. Guys, thanks again so much for watching. I really appreciate the love and support so far, and I can't wait to do another one. See you next time.